in South End, we the the community roughly measures about 450 residents, and that includes all the outlying farms and different cottages and stuff. In the village itself, there's probably only 150-ish, about that. The kind of things we, we initially thought, right, we have to do a survey of the community. We need to be able to identify um, the vulnerable people, and not just the vulnerable people that we think are vulnerable, but that they actually think they're vulnerable as well. And um, following from the results of the survey, we were actually surprised because there were several people who do think that they are vulnerable in a, a, a situation that we wouldn't have classed as as being of a, in any way vulnerable. For South End, it was um, the 22nd of March 2013, and uh, it was about two o'clock in the afternoon when the power went off initially. And we thought by tea time it would probably be back on. And we are used to the power coming going off in South End and in Kintyre. It does happen regularly, but not for hours and hours, possibly an hour or two. Anyway, by Friday night time, we knew it wasn't coming back on. And the worsening weather was sort of, we were sort of digging in for the, for the night as we thought. But then by Saturday, uh, we realised how widespread the problems were and that uh, you know, it was going to be a lot, a lot longer before we got it on. But I'm sure everybody thought by the end of the weekend, we would definitely have had power. As it turned out, it was Thursday before we got power back on. And they actually explained to us afterwards, at a meeting we had afterwards, that it was very wet snow, which lay on the power lines. And with the cold, cold weather, froze and then we had more wet snow and with the weight of it it just brought all the power lines down right across the the peninsula so it was a very very bad week for us in actual fact and um Morag Brown from Argyll and Butte contacted me I think it was either the Sunday night or the Monday and I started then going round doors to make sure people were warm enough had um, enough hot water it's just simple things like hot water something hot to eat most of the village itself had no heating because all the houses are electric in the village so the farms outside they were fine because most of them have stoves you know and wood burners and that sort of thing um, and we just continually went round all the people in the village making sure that they had enough warm blankets and hot water bottles and hot food and then on the Tuesday they managed to get a generator down to us and we set up the local tea room with the generator. Oh no the plan wasn't in place before it actually I mean I hadn't even started writing it before but it did spur us on and I very quickly got the survey out following the week of, of the power cuts because we felt while this terrible situation had been fresh in everybody's mind it was the perfect time to get the, the, the survey out and uh, we got a box set up in the local shop and they they did the completed surveys and put them into the box and I collected them and then I put them on a spreadsheet and worked out you know the figures and everything for the village and from there then I, I started writing the plan and I, I just it gained momentum once I had started as I say it was very easy to to continue I, I managed, from, from a couple of different sources actually, I managed to get a, a look at what other people were, were trying to put together. And it, it gave me a basis really to work from. And once I had started it, I actually found it very easy. I've added stuff to it that isn't on any other plan. And I've taken away stuff that, you know, uh, was on other plans that we didn't feel was necessary for us ourselves. We had a debrief in, in Campbelltown where uh, our community council, the chairman and myself, um, and another Carradale Community Council and Clacken Community Council uh, came along and we sat round a table. And it was actually very good because we could, it was easy to say, it was a nice conversation and we could say what we felt had gone right and what we felt had gone wrong. And um, 
it, it was it was good. The council came. Unfortunately, there was nobody from Southern and Scottish there, because that would have been good as well. But uh, the fact that we could sit round with the council and say to them, a Gyland Butte council that is, and say to them. Yeah, you did this right, but in future, could you do this or could you do that? And they're taking it away as a learning curve as well. Following on from that, we did actually have another uh, debrief with Southern, Scottish and Southern Energy. And they came down to South End and did a roadshow down there. And we got on very well with them that night too. They took away on board things that we felt they could have done better. But we also congratulated them for the outstanding work they did during that week. These men were out working on power lines in all weathers, frozen, soaking wet, home, cha well not home, but home to a hotel, a bed and breakfast, wherever they were staying, change back out again. It was it was hard work for them that week. So all in all, I think it has been it's been very worthwhile these different meetings that we've had afterwards. We've got our plan, we've got our emergency bag and we've really consolidated relationships both with our Gyle and Butte and um, Southern Scottish and Southern Energy. So I think all of that has been very positive. If if something like this were to happen again and I'm sure it will in actual fact, because we do have these issues down in South End where we've had a road, we've had a bridge collapse and the road's been closed. We've had uh, a landslide and the road's been closed. And now we've had the snow and the power cables down. So we're quite convinced at some time in the future it will happen again. And to have this plan in place and to have the emergency bag will make a difference initially because we can, you know, everybody is geared up to just get started. For people who haven't filled in their own emergency plan if they think it's not for them, Perhaps they should look at just even a shortened version of it so that they have a group of people that will immediately spur into action should something happen in their community. And it's very easy to go on and say, oh, nothing will ever happen here. But, well, we've seen quite a lot and we're only, you know, we're, I don't think we're different from most small communities. I think... Uh, our community action plan, I think it's excellent um, and I'm not bragging for us. We've worked very hard to put this together and I think most communities should have something like this. It doesn't need to be um, an extended book, uh, but they have to have something in place so that in the future they, they have the resources needed to deal with any emergency that comes along.